protected the nation from disaster and taken precaution for the future. We have avoided hasty, ill-considered action. We have not been swayed by the unwise clamor of our opponents. History has proved that we cannot meddle with economic laws. There is no cause for alarm. The situation Shukert. will write it. Shukert. Make a point of The Honourable Member has challenged our programme. Our reply is that we should concern ourselves with the urgent international questions demanding our leadership. Confident that our eternal affairs will adjust themselves. Order, order. Chilkato blow this ministry sky high. The Honourable Member for Merton has the floor. Mr. Speaker, sir. Our national affairs will adjust themselves. So says the government. <laughs> That is, that, that is all. In this great crisis, this hour, we, we must, at this internal affairs... I... Don't, 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 leave me, don't. Is there anything I can do, sir? Better get a doctor. Oh, doctor. No, no, no. I, I'm all right. See that his car's here. Yes. Our own fault, Fraser. I told you time and again... I don't want to think... Don't that. you? I do. I want to speak to him lately. Good evening, sir. Same as usual. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Come on, give it. It's all right. Don't, don't stand there. Don't wait. Don't wait. What excuse this time? Oh, it's just nerves, nerves, nothing but nerves, I tell you. Oh, that's scarcely an explanation. That won't satisfy the press. If you must print something lately, say, say I'm overworked, exhausted, anything. I'll speak tomorrow. Look here, Joe Doctor. I've been very patient with you, but I can no longer jeopardize the party. There's a meeting at my house at nine tomorrow, and I want you to be there. Yes, yes, yes. I want some definite assurance that tonight's disgraceful episode will not be repeated. Now, please be prompt. I'll be there. Print a statement from Chilcott. Say he's decided to take time to prepare his reply. Your car, sir. Oh, bruh. No, oh, I'm going to walk. In this fog, sir. It's not particularly any business of yours, is it, Duck? But you've been ill, sir. Don't you think you'd better drive? Please, don't paw me. Don't paw me. Where you're going, you fool. I won't be quite so free with you. Oh, oh sorry, Cousin John. Cousin? Huh? Cousin? Yes, do you mind? Probably a good job for cousins, don't you think? Well, for the luck. Could be luck. Fantastic, isn't it? Why, it's... It's, it's ridiculous. Anytime you need a double for a dull dinner... Very nominal fee, 13 Clifford's in. Day and night service. I don't seem to remember. I can't place you. Loder, John Loder. No? No, I don't suppose you would. We were always poor relations, Chilcott. Anyway, I've been out of England for 20 years, so there's no reason why you should. No, 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 of course not. I was in the strangers' gallery tonight, Chilcott, and a nice mess you're making of things. <laughs> you knew what tonight meant. It was your chance. Thousands of men and women all over England looking to you and a fine exhibition you're giving them. Has anyone ever told you to mind your own business, Loder? It is my business. 
I've been away long enough to know what England means to me. I wish it were really my business, as it is yours. I'd shout from the housetops. <laughs> very nice, very nice indeed. A soapbox and Hyde Park is what you need, and a flag. Don't forget the flag. <laughs> Perhaps a flag and a soapbox would do you no harm, Chilkert. Hyde Park orators are at least sober when they speak. You, you've said about enough. Yes, Mrs. John Chilcott, Hotel Ritz, Paris. Chilcott, you wish to speak to Madame Chilcott? Hotel Ritz, Paris. An instant, s'il vous plaît. Oui. Don't go, don't go. Hello? Yes. London. Yes, Brock. What? I can't answer for what may happen. Believe me, it's most urgent. Oh, all right. Yes, I'll come. I'll take the first plane in the morning. That's the best I can do. Goodbye. Eve, I'm your friend, an old friend. Don't go back. I must go back. Why? Tell me why. Haven't you had heartbreak enough? Humiliation enough? I can't understand you. He is ill. Oh, let that woman take care of him. The most sensible thing you ever did was to separate from him. Perhaps he'll need me a little now. I'm almost glad he's ill. You know well enough what you're going back to, Eve. Why? You know why I married him, don't you? Oh, you loved him then, I expect. Here's your answer. There's Mr. Chilcott. Let him in, and then you may go. Oh, die. Jack, darling. Tell Diana what happened. Oh, you were there. You were tired, darling. Oh, it's just my nerves, die. Just nerves, that's all. Yes, I know. They've overburdened you. I'll mix you something. What was there? Much commotion after I left? I really don't know, dear. When you sat down, I left rather hurriedly. I did catch a glimpse of Mr. Fraser's face, though. He was purple. Ah. Was he very angry with you? Angry? He was wild. Chilcott, you're a disgrace to the party. <laughs> Is that what he said? Be at my house at nine o'clock tomorrow, or I'll I'll cut your head off. Words to that effect. Words. Words. I'm so sick of words. Oh, my poor darling. It's a long, long time until tomorrow. Don't think about your work now. Forget your speeches. That is... All except one. Tell me you still love me. I do. Oh, Di, you're the... You're the only one I want near me. I hate other people. They can't stand there looking at me. That's why I... I like the fog. People can't see you. And you can't see their... ugly, staring little faces. Although tonight... Tonight I saw a face so strangely like... Like what, dear? A man could vanish in the fog, couldn't he? Walk completely out of his life and forget. 
we can forget everything except each other here. Oh, let's cut it, I Clear out everything. Committees, meetings, speeches, naggings. Let's cut it and run. No. Oh, just you and I. No. It wouldn't work. There are other ways of forgetting. Lord. And what has the chef prepared to please the royal palate? Oh, go on. It's no, no, don't tell me. Let me guess. Partridge. Quail. Terrapin. Well, then, chicken a la Marengo. <laughs> well, what does it tell me? It's ash. Oh, it's never, never call it by that name. In the better places, it is known as Hashi Espanol. Now, that is what we shall call it. Yes, sir. Magnificent. My compliments to the chef. <laughs> Oh, here's a letter for you, sir. Quick, give it to me, give it to me. That's the one I've been waiting for. Oh, do open it, sir. Ooh. Oh, I'm all of a dinner. Robbins, look. Five pounds. Come and see us. Be glad if you will submit more articles. Quick, where's the paper? St. George Gazette. <laughs> yeah, it is, sir. No, 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 that's yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. By George, Lakeley's used it as an editorial. What's editorial? Now, don't ask foolish questions, Robbins. Oh, I hope they put your picture in the next time, sir. In England's great crisis. Machines. Men. Robbins were made! Are we, sir? Well, it's a good beginning. Now, out you get, Countess, and there's more work to be done. Well, don't forget about your ash, sir. Oh, how can I think of Ash when I've been published? <laughs> Mr. Tilkett! Mr. Fraser and Mr. Lakeley here, sir. Now, let me alone. You've missed your appointment for nine o'clock, sir. No? It's after ten, and they're downstairs now to see you. Oh, they're always hounding me. Please get up, Don't sir. Let me alone. Don't pour me. Don't pour me. I'll draw your bath, sir. Loader, eh? Big pardon, sir? Good morning, Austin. It's nice to see you. Welcome home, madam. We're all very happy. Fraser, I'm just about fed up. I'm not going to be penalized with this man's behavior anymore. Come on. You want to give him five more minutes? Not five more seconds. Come on. God rest you, merry gentlemen. My dear child. And Mrs. Silker. Mr. Lakeley, please don't go. Harry, make him stay. I know. I know everything. I've come home to see he doesn't fail you again. No, I'm afraid it's too late. You, you're only making it more difficult for us. It's no go, Eve. He completely ignored our meeting this morning. These are trying times, Mrs. Silker. We can no longer lay ourselves open to episodes like yesterday's and, and this morning's. Can't afford to take the chance. Chance. He's your only chance. He's England's chance. You don't dare do without him. And we don't dare trust him again. Mr. Lately. Brock, did you take anything out of my clothes? Yes, sir. What did you do with it? I threw it away, sir. Confound it, Brock. One of these days I'll... May I remind you, Mr. Fraser and Mr. Lately... Don't remind me. 
haven't a better speaker, and you know it. Especially, Mr. Lakeley, when you provided him with such wonderful ammunition. I? Your editorial in this morning's Gazette. In England's great crisis, it was marvelous. Oh, you, you liked it, eh? Liked it? It was sensational. Let John quote from it in his speech this afternoon, Mr. Lakeley. Let him use it as a, as a basis for his attack. Please, please trust me. Well, it's against my better judgment. But party leaders confer while thousands cheer. John! Oh. You home. Chilka, we've decided... Spare me the details, please. If you want me to speak this afternoon, leave me alone. You will, Chilcott. We shall leave you alone. I see it's quite wrong to be generous with you. No man is bigger than the party. Good morning. Please. I'm sure John only meant he wanted time to prepare. Surely I'll not Would going you to... mind keeping silent just for a moment, my dear? Pray, sir, if, if you just have a little faith, I'll make a great speech this afternoon. My, my, my apologies for not having kept the appointment. They're a little late. Frankly, Jilcott, we'll take another chance because we've no choice. Your behavior has been unforgivable. Goodbye. Goodbye. You were discussing me with Fraser and Lakeley, weren't you? We're not discussing you, John. They were worried. I'll thank you to keep out of my affair. I said I'd never come back. Why do you think I'd come? I have no idea. Did the gigolos run out? John, listen to me. You have a chance of being one of England's great men. You know that, don't you? Don't throw it away. Finished? I suppose so. There's so much I wanted to say to you. Now I'm here, I... I can't seem able to... Oh, help me a little, John. You know what I'm trying to say. All the time I've been away, I, I kept thinking of those first years. We started with so much. I can't believe there's nothing left. Do you mind? I have a thousand things to do. No, I don't mind. You see, I know, John. makes things difficult. I wish I could accept it a little more gracefully, that's all. You're referring to Lady Joyce, aren't you? You can believe that or not, as you choose. Just don't let Fraser and Lakeley down today, will you? It's so important for you. If I can help in any way, I'll be here. Hmm. You'll have helped a great deal more, I think, by remaining in Paris. Locked. Give me the key. Your breakfast, son. I want the key. Give it to me. Doctor said that What's this? Mr. Lakeley's editorial in this morning's Gazette, sir. Ah, Lakeley. He thought it might be helpful to you in preparing your speech. <laughs> in England's great crisis. I'll lay a hundred to one, the fellow never wrote a word of it. He's a fraud. May I serve your breakfast now, sir? No, get out. I 
I must see him about this. Not now, not now. Why are you always whispering behind my back? Sorry, sir. I've just been on the telephone with the shipyards. There's more trouble. Well, don't bother me with it. Sorry to be insistent, sir. But this should be answered today. Whose business is this, yours or mine? I don't think you quite realize, sir. It's most important. I've had about as much of you as I can stand, Blessington. I'm sick of you. You better find yourself another job. You don't mean that, sir. I do mean it. You're discharged, do you hear? Don't stand there. Get out. I'll send you a check. If you do, sir, I'll tear it up. Insolent puppy. I'll get rid of them all. Mr. Chilcote, please. You've got to prepare your speech. Speech? Speech? What speech? You've got to go to the house. I'm not going. Let them come to me. You've got to be there, sir. You giving me orders? You saw what happened to Blessington, didn't you? You must go, sir. I've a good mind to make a clean sweep of all of you. You can't discharge me, sir. I can't, eh? No, sir, you can't. I've been with the family all my life, my father before me. We served your grandfather, your father, and you. Big men they were. They made the fortune you're spending. Made it honestly, by fair play. Decent, upright lives. Oh, Brock, shut up! I will not, sir. It's been bottled up for years, and now it's coming out. Mr. Chilcote, you're a disgrace to your name. You've broken your wife's heart, and you're dragging your whole family into the mud. You've got to speak today, and look at you. I know. Get someone else. Met him in the fog. Face, voice, everything. You never guess. Thirteen Clifford's in. That's the fellow. Goes to dull dinners. Make fine speech. <laughs> Needs a flag, that's all. Here. What are you talking about, sir? Here. Tell him, read editorial, go to House of Commons. Mr. Chilcot. Make speech for me. What are you talking about? I'll show you. I'll tell him myself. They'll hear a speech. Mr. Chilcot. My children, you, day and night service, dull dinners. You got a customer, Loder. What do you mean? You wanted a chance to do something for England, well, you got it. What's the matter with you? I can't think. Everything goes dark, like a door closing. Here. could pull yourself together. You spoke well enough last night. Here. Read editorial. Go to House of Commons. This afternoon, speak for me. I'll be all right tomorrow. Just want to be alone. And rest. Oh, Mr. Chilcot, I, I was afraid I'd lost you. We've just time to get there. Better get a doctor for him. Oh, he doesn't need a doctor. Sleep's the only thing that'll do him any good now. 
Well, is that what he came here for, to sleep? No, sir. To see you. To ask your help. You're John Loder, sir. Yes. Your mother was Pamela Chilcott Loder. That's right. You could do it, sir. Face, voice, everything. You could take his place. Do what? Uh, speak in Parliament, sir. You're both drunk. It's worth a hundred pounds to you, sir. Oh, uh, five hundred. Uh, Name your own price, sir. You, you better come and lie down, too. This is no time for joking, sir. I know him better than anyone. And you fool me. You can fool them all. Will you, sir? Speak in Parliament? Well, I've never made a speech in my life. Well, you evidently convinced Mr. Chilcott you could last night, sir. It means the end of his career if he fails to appear today. Well, he's just got to take what's coming to him. Everyone knows it's a critical time for the party. A critical time for the nation. They're waiting for him at the house now. Please, sir, there's so little time left. No, I wouldn't dare. It's, it's too long a chance. Wonderful, sir. Oh, I'd be too confoundedly nervous. But that's just what you must be, sir. He calls it nerves. And when he's in a tight place, he moves his hands like this and says, nerves, nerves. Nothing but nerves, I tell you. Or, um, don't bother me, don't bother me. He does, eh? Yes, sir. And he has a way of looking over his shoulder and saying, whispering. Why are you always whispering behind my back? If you do anything unexpected, no one will notice. They're used to his moods. I wonder if I could get by with it. I'll help you to get into his clothes. That's a bad scar, sir. Oh, Vimey Ridge. I suggest that you be careful. Keep that cuff well down, sir. Yes, I, I remember. You know Mr. Fraser, the party leader, and Mr. Lakeley, the editor? Yes, I know them by sight. His seat in the house, it's on the first gangway. I know, in the second row. Uh, yes, sir. Well, good luck, sir. Thanks. Oh, your coat, sir. No, never mind. Oh, you better, sir. Don't bother me, don't bother me. And what did I tell you? I'm beginning to think so. Good afternoon, Mr. Chilcott, sir. Oh, good afternoon. There he is. Chilcott, we were worried about you. Now you're looking very fit. Just think of your speech, that's all. You're prepared to speak, of course. I'll do my best. Come along, then. See you later. They mouth the phrase world crisis. They make a scarehead of the dole to frighten children. And now they point to new ghosts and goblins. They try with the desperation born of hopelessness to make Englishmen afraid. But they fail. The World War was one of the cricket fields of Eton and Harrow. So will the present economic struggle be won in London shops, the shipyards of Liverpool, the furnaces of Manchester? Order, order. The Honourable Member for Merton has the floor. Mr. Speaker, sir, I, uh... <laughs> sir, the Honourable Member laughs. He laughs at a funeral. Nor is he alone in his smug ignorance that the world we have known lies dead at our feet. The government is too busy. 
to hear the cries of a new world which is being born in spite of them. <laughs> like voodoo witch doctors, they still encant their weird remedies over the deceased. Misery in the midst of abundance. Clothes, food, shelter, even luxuries enough for every man. And yet thousands starve. Are we then to remain idle whilst each day new machines throw still more men out of work? <laughs> the, these engines, made by man, now threaten to destroy him. Shall we, like, like savages, turn and rend these machines because they can outwork us? Or shall we like civilized people seek to make them serve us. Here, 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 here. Chukut still has the floor. Wait a moment, here's some more of it. Yes? What? Chukut said that? There can be no solution until we face the facts. <laughs> Sir, the only political party to whom we owe allegiance now is all humanity. Let us then strive together to free ourselves from slavery, to provide all men with food and clothes and leisure. Above all, let us fight to win back our own souls. Mr. Chilkert's car. No, no, I, I came in a taxi. But your car's here, sir. Mr. Chilkert's car. Chilkert! You can't run away today, my boy. Well, you see, I, I... I... No, it seems not. That was a bit more than we expected. Yes, it was more than I expected. Yes, but wait a minute. Where are we going? To your house. To my house? Yes. There were people there to congratulate you. Well, how charming. Well, shall we go in your car? My car? Oh, oh, oh yes, 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 of course, yes. Mm -hmm. It's a nuisance. I, uh, I seem to have forgotten my key. Nice to be home, isn't it? Uh, is Brock here? No, sir. Shall I? No, don't bother. Don't bother. Not quite yourself, are you? you, you you've no idea of what I've just been through. He is shaken up, isn't he? Why are you always whispering behind my back? My dear chap. We're concerned about you. Well, I suggest a drink. Splendid. Uh, well, what are we waiting for? Well, after you. Oh, no, no, after you. Oh. Hmm. Uh, oh, no one here yet? No, no, there isn't. Oh. Well, I, I don't have to tell you where the whiskey is, sir. Uh, just help yourself. Oh, thanks. Chilcott, we must take full advantage of today's mystery. 
Decidedly. What are your ideas uh, of tomorrow's trip? Tomorrow? I do hope you're not rushing off to the continent again. Oh, that depends on so many things. At least not before Thursday. I'll be so disappointed if you don't come to my reception, dear. Well, we'll try. Oh, please. Eve, dear, how nice to have you back. I had no idea you'd return, hadn't you? Quite sudden, wasn't it? Oh, quite. Short visit? No, I'm here to stay. Oh, how nice for John. Do let's see something of each other. Lunch tomorrow? I shall be busy. You know everyone here, of course. Of course, dear. Don't trouble. I don't have to tell you to make yourself at home, do I? Beg pardon, sir. Madam is asking for you. Who? Mrs. Chilcote, sir. She's in the garden. Shall I tell her you're here, sir? Uh, no, no, no. Certainly not. Well, not now. Won't you have another drink? Jack! Oh, Mr. Fraser, Mr. Lately, how do you do? Hello. I hope you are sufficiently proud of him. John, you were absolutely magnificent. Far and away the best speech you've ever made. Uh, thank you, my dear. Thank you. Uh, don't you think you ought to save that sort of thing until we're alone? Chilcote, Lately and I will talk over tomorrow's plans. Uh, shall we see you later? No. Uh, yes. <laughs> Jack, come here. You didn't so much as glance at me in the gallery today. You knew I was there, didn't you? Why, yes, of course, my dear. Well, you're forgiven. Well, hardly that first fine, careless rapture, I'd say. What's wrong? Wrong? Is it Eve? Eve? Why didn't you tell me your wife had come back? Wife? Oh, you mean... You mean my wife? What is the matter with you? Nothing, nothing. I... I'm beginning to believe you were right last night. Perhaps you do need a rest. Maybe you ought to get away. You're right. I, I, I should get away. Perhaps I was selfish. I will go away with you. We'll have a little holiday on the continent. Continent? Oh, now, I tell you, we'll talk that over later. Just now, I have so many things to do. Telephones, telegrams, statements to the press. You'll be surprised how many things I have to do. Now, you'll excuse me, won't you? You'll excuse me. for a week. Oh, thanks very much. If that speech doesn't force a general election, I don't know what will. Uh, well, I, uh, I, I think that, uh, would you excuse me just one moment? It's nice to see you here. Well, what did you expect? 
Well, uh, well, after all, one never knows. Big pardon, Your Leadership. May I call your ladyship's car? No, no, don't bother. I don't think I could have done it today without you. The words seem to stick in my throat until you smile. And then... Why, John, you haven't said anything as nice as that to me for years. Oh, haven't I? Big pardon, sir. You're wanted on the telephone. I? Oh, yes, 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 of course. Uh, will you forgive me? As a joke. I can't rouse him, sir. He's worse than I've ever seen him. Get him back here. Well, you can't think of leaving now, sir. I'd better leave now. I'm making mistakes in wives. Yes, sir, that's what I wanted to explain. That was Lady Joyce who just left. She's the other one. The other one? Uh, yes, sir. You're very fond of her. Oh. I might warn you, sir. She's a trifle impulsive. Yes, I discovered that. I might say dangerous. Oh. I would suggest diplomacy. I see. Well, I... I don't envy children, that's all. Brock. Who's that lovely girl out there? That's your wife, sir. My wife? Yes. Oh, I take that back, Brock. I do envy Chilkert. You're not on very good terms with her, sir. She knows about the other one. Oh. You treat her rather formally. Oh, that's rotten, isn't it? I suggest you go back to your guest, sir. You must be very, very careful. I will, Doctor. That's right. Ah, <laughs> oh, chuck at me, boy. You gave them what for this afternoon. Good for you. Thank you. You're very kind. How's your liver behaving? My liver? Liver? Uh, Eve. Uh, oh, no, you don't. We'll hear what Eve has to say first. Eve? What's your report? The patient doing very nicely, thank you, Doctor. He seems a little distraught. Oh, but his nerves are much better. I noticed that the moment he started to speak this afternoon. Oh, I'm quite all right. Don't bother about me. Just don't trifle with your luck, Chilkert. I've been talking to your wife. I won't mince words about your condition. You're under a great strain. Doctor, you've no idea what a strain. now? Laying out your pajamas, sir. My pajamas? Yes, sir. Oh, no, you don't. Uh, Mr. Chilkett was no better, sir. I'll spend the night there and try my best to bring him back tomorrow. Tomorrow? Man, you're mad. I'm not going to stay here tonight. Well, I I'm shaking. Look, I'd never have lived through that dinner if it hadn't been for Fraser and his wife. I heard you talking as I came in, sir. I thought you managed wonderfully well. well never mind that. You get me a cab. You'll be quite comfortable here, sir. Brock, I shall not be comfortable until that front door has closed behind me. I'm afraid you've got to stay, sir. No. Uh, we are both caught. Can't help it. Uh, you'll have an assortment of clothing, everything you're likely to need. No. Nope. And if you'll ring in the morning, Alston will bring your tea and draw your bath. I don't like tea in the morning. Uh, you'll be quite safe in this room, sir. I don't feel safe anywhere in this house. Where does that door lead to? Uh, to Mrs. Chilkett's room, sir. To Mrs.? Oh, no. A big pardon, sir. It's something we don't talk about. That door has been locked for several years. Locked? It has, eh? I'm doing very well. Very well indeed, Brock. Yes, sir. 
Another great speech in Parliament. You'll read it. Chilcot's great speech. Sensation. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ministry tottering, eh? I did that. <laughs> did you hear how I settled strike in my own shipyards, eh? <laughs> yes, I know all about it. Loader. Ah, uh, Loader! Who's Loader? Chilcot did it. I did it. Yes, I know you can go back. You must try. You want to go back? Oh, people. Politics. People nagging me. Oh, that's what I came here to get away from. But I must see him. Please. Every day you'll give me the same excuse. Tomorrow, tomorrow. What are you mumbling about, huh? Nothing, son. He's in a terrible condition. Terrible. Who's there? Rock, who's there with you? What are you fussing about in here? Then you better go back to Don't, bed, sir. I'll do as I please. There, sir. Rest. Do you want him to go back home like that, sir? No. I'll go back. you up. I stayed up purposely. I wanted to see you. Oh. Sorry about missing tea. And dinner as usual. Well, I, I had a whiskey and soda and an olive with Fraser. The Parliament adjourning on Wednesday. Quite a few things to clean up. Remember when I played this the last? No, I, I don't think I do. I'm glad. <laughs> Why? So many things have happened since then. So many fine things. You've changed. Oh, so much. I'm very proud of you, John. Are you? You've been doing such splendid work. I've only one worry now. What's that? I want it to last. You mustn't try to do too much. They'll work you to death if you let them. You've been going night and day without any rest. Oh. Hello? Yes? Yes, he's here. Just a moment, please. It's for you, John. Who is it? No, don't go. Please. Yes? Jack, I want to see you. Tonight. Doesn't matter what time. I'll wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I can't. I, I have a meeting later. Look here, Jack. You've been avoiding me. If it's some other woman, you needn't think you can get rid of me so easily. Oh, yes. Yes. I warn you. You better come. I'm sorry, I can't get there. I'm glad you're not going out tonight. Don't work too late. Discipline? All right, General. Uh, 
Must we... Must we go to that affair at Fraser's tomorrow night? You accepted. Oh, did I? After all, he's been rather a friend. Yes, all right. Good night, Eve. Right. The best man you have. Send him right away, please. Thank you. Sandwiches, sir. Hmm? Oh. Good night, sir. Good night. Sure, I'm not disturbing you. On the contrary. A moment ago, I almost knocked at your door. I wish you had. Why didn't you? Well, it's rather late, you know, and I thought perhaps... Very well. You're forgiven. You really wanted me to come? Oh, yes. Yes, I thought you might help me with these sandwiches. I couldn't possibly manage them alone. I appreciate your gallantry, sir, but I don't like sandwiches. It's very cold in here. Yes, it is rather. Mm. I'll stir the fire up for you. It'll be warm enough in a minute. A little like old times, isn't it? No, it isn't really. Because I never loved you as much as I love you now. Oh, please don't be offended. Since the new John has come back to me, I don't think I really love the old John at all. Do you mind my telling you how I feel? Or after all that's happened between us, is it in poor taste? A man should always be proud of a woman's love. Well, the fire's leaping up nicely now, isn't it? Mm -hmm.
Don't you think we're being rather absurd? Why? Because I love you enough to forgive everything. I haven't asked you to, have I? Don't you want me to? No. I want to be left alone. I want to live my own life in my own way. Without me, John. I've been without you before, haven't I? You went to France, didn't you? But I couldn't stand your cruelty then. Then what makes you want to stand it now? I don't know. I don't know. I can only tell you that you're a different man. Someone I seem never to have been with before. And yet I love you more than ever. It doesn't matter to me what you've done. I don't want to leave you again. So, this is what a good speech in Parliament can do for you, eh? Oh. I'll never forgive you for saying that. Good. Perhaps you'll go now and leave me alone. Why didn't you leave things as they were? Why did you make me believe again? Your ladyship, that's a detailed report. Very well. I'm going to the River Club now. He'll be there. If I want anything further, I'll deal with Scotland Yard. Robbins! Confound me, Robbins! Do you hear me? Robbins! Right out in the passage. What do you want? It's Mr. Loder, sir. You've got to come back at once. No, no, no. Why should I? He refuses to go on with it. Why? Money? Pay him. Oh, please come back home, sir. I've brought your clothes. It won't be difficult if you try hard. Uh, I follow in his footsteps, eh? Yes, sir. You think I can't, do you? You say I can't. Who is he? A shadow. Like that. I can smash it. Lady Joyce, sir. He can't go on much longer with her. Lady Joyce? So, he not only wants to fill my shoes, but my slippers as well, eh? Where is he? Where is he, Brock? Tell me, where is he? Where is he now, this minute? Where is he? He's at the River Club. Mr. Fraser's entertaining there tonight. Oh, Mr. Loder, sir. Robbins! Give me the medicine. Don't take it, sir. Get out. Get out. Yes. Mr. Loder was all right. Did you come here, you bald-headed old coot? If you don't get out, I'll tell her everything. Get out. Give it to me. you think, Robbins? Dining at the River Club. Loder making love to a lady. Oh, Mr. Loder, you talk so wild, you scare me. Robbins, lay out my evening clothes. I'm going out tonight. I'm going out. Lady relative. Mr. Chilcott, 
I've danced with every Prime Minister since Gladstone. And I must say, the way you dance, you're destined for great things. Uh, <laughs> the legend runs that if Lady Relaton selects you for a dancing partner, you're halfway to being Prime Minister. I'm very grateful. Do you see? I don't know. Oh, hello. Hmm. Dance? Love to. You're looking very beautiful tonight, my dear. Thank you kindly, sir, she said. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking how brave it was of you to come back to John. But how well it's turned out. Why so quiet, Diana? What? We haven't spoken a word in the last five minutes. Now tell me, is it true that a certain exalted personage employs a double who appears for him on occasion? this next dance. May I? You've asked so prettily. The River Club. Do you suppose it's possible for one person to look exactly like another? Same face? Voice, expression, everything? Well, yeah, that's ridiculous. I was just wondering if a man could vanish in the fog, walk completely out of life. You said that yourself, remember? You haven't forgotten. You can't expect me to, to remember everything I ever said. I've probably been drinking. Yes. You used to then. But now you're like a different person. Nonsense. Don't be absurd. Uh, will you excuse me? Of course, it would be a dangerous business for whoever tried it. Prison, even. Oh, my dear, rubbish. Yes, you have changed. Even your hand seemed different. Thank you so much, Mr. Chilton. Get away at once. The car's in the drive. The chauffeur will bring our things. Will you come? Come with me. Leaving so early? Why, yes. I'm rather tired and John isn't feeling very well. I hope I didn't upset you. Nerves, nerves. Uh, just nerves, that's all. Upset him? How? What have you been saying, Diana? That he's not John Chilcott, but someone impersonating him. Impersonating him? So why do you waste time on her? The woman's completely insane. Wait a minute. If I'm wrong, it's so easy to prove it. Nonsense. I'll prove nothing. Why should I? He has a scar on his left wrist. Jack Chilcott never had one. If his wife doesn't know that, I do. John, can't you put a stop to this? Oh, ridiculous. Well, naturally, Eve, I can understand why you wouldn't want to believe me. It will be a scandal. Obviously, people will never believe that you didn't know. If Jack has disappeared, Scotland Yard has a right to know. Scotland Yard? You're making a fool of yourself, Diane. What if you're mistaken? But I'm not mistaken. I saw it with my own eyes. All you have to do is to look for yourselves. Oh, well, let's make an end of this. Sure. What are you mumbling about? Your wrist. What? The scar. You haven't one, have you? Of course not. Let's see, I, then. My dear, die. 
Will you stop pawing? Well, I know what you say now. I presume we can go now, John. Go, all right. You can go if you want to. I need a drink. But I thought you wanted... Uh, questions, questions, always questions. Come on, Diana, let's have a drink. No, thank you. Oh, oh come on, Fraser. Mr. Lately, will you see me to my car? When am I to make the arrest, Your Ladyship? Oh, don't bother. Why did you bring him here? I had to, sir. It wasn't safe there. He's been in a bad way all day. I stayed with him in his room to prevent Mrs. Chilcott from finding him. Did she see him? I think not, sir. He slipped away in the fog. I found him and brought him here. I'll have to get a doctor for him. Now, my part in all this is finished, Brown. I've booked my passage for Canada. Oh, you can't do that, sir. I'm leaving tonight. Mr. Fraser's coming to see him tonight, sir. He won't be put off. Well, he'll have to be. I'm finished. I kept him away as long as I could, sir. It's about the cabinet, an emergency. It has to be settled directly. I'm sorry. Oh, you've done so much for him, Mr. Loder. Please do this one last thing. Parliament adjourns tonight. He'll get leave of absence. I'll take him away and bring him back with no one the wiser. Brock, there is nothing but misery in this for all of us. There's misery for her, if you don't, sir. Just this one thing. But that's the end. Thank you, sir. There's nothing I can do here. Will you get the doctor? Yes, sir. Robbins. Robbins. Are you there, Robbins? I mean... I thought I heard Mr. Loder call, sir. He's very ill. I'm going to fetch a doctor. You stay here until I get back. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Lotus, sir. Yes. Yeah. Robbins. Robbins, that you? <laughs> Good old. Good old Robbins. Sir. Wait. What's that? Look. It's there. It's only your shadow, sir. That's it, yes. That's all he is. My shadow. <laughs> you understand, Robin. Big Ben, sir, strike in the arm. Uh, who's? Uh... Robbins, don't let them come in. But it's only... They've... They're coming for me.
fog's getting worse, huh? Yes. Out of the fog, back into the fog. Well, the masquerade's over. Goodbye, Brock. It's good to know that one can still find a man like you. Thank you, sir. I shan't see you again. When I finish with Fraser tonight, I'm, uh, I'm going back to my lodging. You can never go back, sir. What's that? John Loder died an hour ago, sir. Chilton. Dead? No, sir. The death certificate reads, John Loder. Why, man, how, how could you dare? Oh, there's more than mere chance in all this, sir. There were great things to be done, and he was too weak. There's a rough kind of justice in all things, finally, I suppose. Sir. Oh, you've no right, Brock. I can't go on living this lie, trading on another man's name. You, you can see that, can't you? It was your grandfather's name, sir. I know, but... But there are other reasons. You can't understand. Begging your pardon, sir. You mean Mrs. Chilkert? Make sure. I hope you'll change your mind about going out tonight, sir. Perhaps you can persuade him to stay at home, madam. You're not going out, are you? I... It would be so easy to stray off into the fog and not come back. And I want you to stay, John Loder. You know. Brock told me. Did he tell you that Chilkin? He told me that, too. I wish I could say I was sorry, but I can't. Why shouldn't I be honest about it? All I can feel now is a relief, a great relief. You've been so splendid. You've protected me. You've been loyal to him. You haven't a single thing to regret. No, I haven't been quite honest. I pretended to come here tonight to meet Fraser. And all the time, I wanted to see you again. You see, I love you, Eve. I have loved you since you smiled on me in the house. Before I knew you were Chilkin's wife, and every moment since. Oh, John, my dear. Did you know that, too? I know it now. Evening, Mr. Fraser. Mm. Ah, Eve. Well, well, young man. Things are happening. We want you to leave for Geneva tonight. Tonight? Yes, there's not a moment to spare, and I've got to have your answer. Uh, do you accept? It rests entirely with my wife. Tell them he accepts. Good. Come along. John, you'll come back. Yes. Come along. We've just time to catch the midnight train if we hurry. <laughs> 